All right, let's do this. Uh, can you hear me okay? All right, uh, thanks everyone for being here. Thanks to the B-Sides team and uh, the Passwords Con team uh, for having me here um, for second year in a row. And for second year in a row also, I am the one opening this track, which is very good. Uh, I said this last year, but I'm gonna say it again because it's still true. It's very good to be the first one because there is no pressure. So even if, if this talk is terrible, uh, all the following talks are gonna be amazing. So uh, you're, you're welcome to all of the following talkers, so speakers. So um, my name is Aldo. I am the application security lead for Hyper. Uh, I apologize because I have a lot of content, so I may go a little bit faster. So feel free to catch me afterwards if you have more questions or if you wanna go deep on any of these topics. I'm gonna skip the agenda and I'm gonna do a quick passkeys recap. So, as most of you know, uh, Passkeys has been growing a lot in the recent years. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, Google announced that they have passed the 1 million authentication mark in just one year. So, over 1 billion authentication using Passkeys, uh, which is huge. Uh, and as you can see, more and more companies are using Passkeys every day. And when it comes to pass keys, we have several options to store them. Uh, the first one being security keys, which I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with. Uh, and then we have platform authenticators. Platform authenticators work very similar to, to security keys in a way that the private key used to uh, authenticate you never leaves the device. Uh, this, is, this is amazing to me because nobody has access to that private key besides me. So they, have, they need physical access in order to use that authenticator. And lastly, we have, we have sync passkeys. They work almost exactly as, pa as platform authenticators, the only difference being that now somebody else is storing those passkeys for you. Uh, this is great for adoption, might not be great for everyone, uh, because some of those vendors may be protecting your passkeys with a password. So um, you may be using these amazing passkeys that are very secure, but you are protecting them with a password, which uh, is not ideal. And of course, this has some resistance. Uh, if we go back to the first two options, you cannot log in from anywhere. I, that, that is a fact. So a lot of us are traveling today, and if we didn't bring our pass keys, I mean our Juby keys, we're done. We cannot log in. And that is a fact. Uh, and very similar to this point, uh, if your device is stolen or you lost it or for whatever reason uh, is not available, you're done. You cannot log in. But for the third option, and I'm sure I'm not the only one, but some people don't want their passkeys being stored by somebody else uh, for the reasons that I mentioned. Like um, this, at the end of the day, these are private keys and you're using private keys to uh, sign a challenge. So uh, this, again, is great for adoption, but not a lot of people are in favor of doing this. And we also have developer resistance. Uh, a few months ago, I ran into this post, uh, which is, is very good. I recommend you checking it out. Uh, it's from a developer company, and they mentioned that how implementing passkeys is very hard. Uh, it's 100 times harder than they expect it to be. Uh, they made some good points, some not very good, but uh, they do have some valid things. And one of the things that, I, that they mentioned is that for the end user perspective, there's really no difference uh, when you use a passkey and when you use biometrics to unlock uh, a username and password. So to them, they are simply providing biometrics and they are authenticated to a website. So they, to them it's transparent, right? So they don't have any incentive to move uh, away from passwords to a passkey. So if you have a chance, please, uh, you can check this article. It's, it has some very good points. So going back to the original question, did we actually remove passwords? And I mean this in our company. And uh, well, the, the answer is yes. We, from day one, we have been the passwords company and now we are the identity assurance company. But yeah, we don't have any corporate passwords at all. And as you can imagine, this has some uh, challenges when it comes to account recovery. So how are you gonna recover those accounts if you don't have a password, if you're not using email to recover those accounts, right? Uh, and when we look at the traditional recovery options, uh, I'm sure most of you already know this, but uh, you can use SMS, you can get an email, you can get a 1TP. There are many of options you can use to recover your accounts. One of them being uh, calling IT support. And again, as I'm, I'm sure you know, uh, this could be abused by social engineering and it's, it's very fun. And all of these options have something in common, right? So they are not very secure. They could be, uh, or not as secure as we could as hope so, right? So this is why now we have IDB. 
Uh, IDB is kind of a new term, but essentially means identity verification, right? So, uh, you know, it's a process of identifying or making sure that a user is who they say they are. And this may sound familiar, like, isn't it this what we have been doing for the last several decades? Uh, but it actually isn't because we, in the past, we have been using just a password, right? So now we're actually verifying that the user is actually the user, right? And what is the main thing that we're trying to solve here? Well, verifying the user identity, of course. Uh, this could be for a number of things, you know, just creating a new account, uh, logging to a website, getting a loan, getting a credit card. Uh, we need to verify your user, right? Something really interesting to me, I didn't know, and I didn't think it was possible, is uh, using it for interviews. Funny thing, uh, we had a customer saying that they, they had a job posting, and some somebody applied for this job, they went through all the interviews, they got accepted, uh, this was person A, and then on the first day of the job, person B shows up. And they had no way of knowing that they were different persons. Uh, several months passed and they were not aware that the person they hired was not the person that showed up for work. Uh, so that is a very good use case for uh, identity verification, making sure that the person that you hire is actually the one that is working for you. And you know, the, the traditional, uh, ways of doing this, uh, like uh, account recovery, onboarding new users or new devices. And if we do a, qu a quick Google search, uh, we're going to learn that there are many, many vendors that do identity verification. This is recent. I mean, uh, until recently, there were not many vendors that did this. Uh, disclaimer, uh, Hyper also does this, and Hyper is not even here. So uh, I'm sure there are even more vendors that can do identity verification for you. And some examples of identity verification, uh, you know, probably you have been asked to provide a selfie or a video submission uh, or even an ID, like a driver's license, or even verification by human. Uh, you know, just having a video chat with someone and they can verify that it's you. Uh, I don't know who's staying in this hotel, but if you are and if you were asked to do online check-in, you were actually uh, asked to provide an ID. So even now in this hotel, we, we were asked to provide, to do some sort of identity verification. And now I'm gonna give you an example. So I'm, I'm from Mexico in case that wasn't clear, uh, but uh, uh, we have this uh, tax agency and it's the equivalent of the IRS here, right? So when the pandemic hit, they were trying to do things a little bit faster and they were, uh, they set up this website, which was used to identify users and then, uh, once you were identified, you were able to do the thing that you wanted to do, right? Uh, so here's the thing, they were asking you to, s they were sending you a challenge and, the and then you had to read that challenge back. The funny thing about this challenge is that it was coming usually from songs or poems. So the end users were saying something that was very, very funny. And I'm gonna give you a couple examples of this. Uh, one of them being, uh, I don't know who loses more in this farewell. So that, that is so deep. Uh, can, can you imagine this? Like if you're trying to log into your email and then Google is asking you to record a video saying something like this in order to verify your identity, that, that's very bizarre. And we have one more, uh, the last one, that desire for nothing less than you. That's, that's so beautiful. Uh, again, this is so weird to me. And, and the worst part is that this wasn't an automated process. Somebody was actually reviewing those videos and making the decision on whether that was you or not. Uh, as you can imagine, this couldn't scale and this actually didn't work. So IDB has some challenges, of course. Uh, the first one being PII storage. What are you gonna do with all of that? Like, where are you gonna store those videos, selfies, IDs? What, what's gonna happen with all of them? Uh, we know that People love to store stuff in S3 unprotected, so who knows where, where my stuff is going to end up, right? Of course, it's subject to fraud. Uh, people trying to identify, prove that they are somebody else, you know, to get a new credit card, a new loan, stuff like that. But of course, this has user friction. Users are being asked to do something else that they wanted to. They are being requested to, you know, record themselves to provide more data and do things that they usually didn't have to do. Uh, if we have time, I'm gonna go back to an example, but for now I'm gonna skip it. And again, just privacy. Uh, when you are recording videos, you are 
you know, providing where you are to these companies. Like if I wanted to log into some of these websites right now, I would have to show them where I am. Like all of this environment would have to be recorded. And again, that has a lot of concerns. And of course we have to worry about AI. Uh, there are some websites that you can create videos in. So they can make you look like, for instance, right now somebody could take this video of me and then they can feed it to th this AI and then make it say something as if we're, as if we're me. So IDB has to beat that challenge. They have to make sure that they are not dealing with AI when they are doing some identity verification, of course. And in general, I think a lot of companies are not taking users into consideration. Like, uh, again, users really, well, at least me, I don't want people, you know, having videos of myself, you know, with the background. Like, I don't want them to have access to my house. I don't want them to have access to my job simply because they want to verify who I am, right? So that is, I think that is something that companies are not taking into consideration. Uh, and I have one example for you. Uh, this is from a Riser app. Think of it as, as if, if it were Uber. So this is what the drivers are seeing. Um, I want you to take a really good, uh, really good look at this picture because it's very subtle. So you may miss it. Uh, what's what's the issue here? So again, please take a good look at this picture and let me know if you, if you see something wrong with this profile. So um, this is what was provided to the to the drivers. Uh, if you take a look, uh, it says that the security verification is good, valid photo has been provided, and the credit card was verified. So to the to the drivers, this is an amazing rider, right? They have been fully verified, or maybe it's just me, but uh, either the person looks exactly like that, or, or this is some sort of fraud. And they have very good rating too, four ninety three. That's that's a very good rating. And one more challenge: um, there are some websites that are actually selling data, so you can bypass these controls. So this is not AI; these are actual people that are selling their data so you can bypass these controls. So if somebody has a site that is asking you to uh, provide a selfie, you can go ahead and push just a selfie instead of providing your own. And of course, um, face recognition doesn't always work as expected. Uh, I was testing this website some time ago and uh, they were uh, they had an image of you and they were asking you to provide a selfie to basically match that you were the person that you were trying to authenticate as. Uh, and of course, uh, it, that didn't work and because clearly those, those people are not the same. Uh, but I thought that maybe I was using some pictures that were not as good. You know, they have bad quality. So uh, I tried a few more and the application was always saying that the, the person was the same. Then I try using one of my pictures. I say, well, I'm going to try mine, maybe one that is not so blurry. And as you can see, I am an old person. I was verified to be this same dude. Uh, so I think what happened here is what the application was not doing negative testing, right? So they weren't doing some matching. And for some reason, they were always saying that the person was verified when it wasn't. So now I'm going to give you a quick example of what we're doing. Uh, just so you know what you can be doing with IDB. So what we're doing internally is that we start the recovery flow by asking the user to provide a valid uh, username, right? So you need a username. Then we ask you to provide your phone number, and then you get an SMS code. So I know that I said that SMS are not secure, but this is not used for authentication. This is just, this is just a data point, right? And then we ask for a location check. Uh, you can decline it, of course, but we're just gonna show at the end that you didn't do a uh, location check. Then we ask for your ID, and then we do some facial recognition. And if all of that weren't enough, we also get you in touch with your manager. So you can do a quick chat and make sure that uh, the manager reviews all of this information, and they, they can ask you more things if they want. They can say, uh, they can approve it. And uh, I think if somebody is able to actually pull this off, like if an attacker can do this, uh, you earn it. <laughs> like, have a, you know, you can have my Jubikis if you want. Like, if you can actually bypass all of this, yeah, you did a great job. So, uh, uh, this is just one option that how IDB could be done. And of course, this is configurable. You can remove things if you like or add more. So, wh what is the future of IDB, right? Uh, I think it's safe to assume that it's safe to assume that IDB is here to stay. Uh, 
just as I mentioned, when I was checking in, I was asked to do some sort of identity verification. And last year, uh, that wasn't the case. And I think one of the drivers is just moving a lot of physical teams to the digital world. And it's very convenient because, you know, checking into the hotel took me less than one minute. You know, I just I just pick up my key and that was it. So uh, it's very convenient, but it has a lot of challenges, of course. Um, but you have to do it uh, in some sort of automated way. Uh, as we saw in my previous example, if you don't automate this, um, it's not going to scale, it's not going to work, and uh, it's not going to be good. And I don't think this is going to end completely in social engineering, but I think it's going to help. Uh, again, if we go back to this example, uh, if somebody can pull this off, you know, uh, you earn it. Go for it, dude. Uh, and lastly, I have some main recommendations for you. Uh, I, I think the main recommendation would be to make an IDB part of your account recovery process. Uh, you know, it doesn't have to be as, uh, you don't have to ask all these many data points, but at least some, right? So if you do this, you're gonna uh, help reduce the account takeover uh, percentages and you're gonna make your account recovery process more successful. One thing that I do wanna mention is that doing IDB is really hard. <laughs> as you have seen. Uh, so if you're gonna do this, uh, I recommend going with a partner. And I'm not saying hyper, you can choose whatever partner you like, but there are countless legal issues. You know, there are specific regulations uh, for not just for PII, but there are lots of rules and legal issues. So if you're gonna do this, uh, I think it's gonna be best if you find one of the many partners that are there uh, that already provide us and do this in very different ways. And also do negative testing, right? <laughs> not just a happy path. Uh, in the example that I show, uh, on the face recognition part, uh, they were not checking the bad face recognition. So always do negative testing. And of course, go passwordless. Uh, if you can, uh, doing going passwordless is going to reduce your account takeover by almost 100%. So it's always a good idea, even with the challenges that I mentioned at the beginning. Uh, I still have some time, so I'm going to go back to my example, just to uh, let you know what I meant by the user friction. There we go. So um, I have this bank, uh, this credit card that uh, requires me when I change phones, it requires me to do identity verification again. Uh, so it was the middle of the night. I wanted to purchase something from AliExpress in the middle of the night. Uh, I couldn't do it because my credit card was blocked because I had to do an identity verification one, one more time. And that's something I'm not willing to do, honestly. Like, it's the middle of the night, everybody's asleep. I just wanna buy a $2 phone, phone case from China. I don't, I don't wanna have to do this in the middle of the night, right? Uh, so, I again, I think banks and you know companies in general are not taking users into account. Uh, they are adding a lot of friction. So in order to, for this to be successful, they have to do it uh, more gracefully, you know, making sure that they are not adding friction to the users. And I think that's it. Uh, yes, that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks everyone for your time. Uh, I do believe we have time for questions. So yeah, if you have any, let me know. Thank you. Questions, raise your hand. I was curious, um, how is this, uh, the facial ID and the, the video, the voice, uh, any of that stuff, how is that with, with the continued advancements in deep fake uh, technology, how is that safe from those things? Right, so um, let me go back to that slide. So you're talking about this step right here. Right, so that is a, a very good challenge. Um, IDB companies have to be, you know, it's gonna become a mouse and cat game. So the IDB companies are gonna have to be, they're doing what they call a liveness check to making sure that it's you. And yeah, I agree, it's a challenge. So IDB companies need to stay on top and need to be constantly evolving to identify those things. That is a valid concern, yep. More questions? Uh, do any IDV companies like have like an audit trail? Can you, will they talk about the accuracy, sensitivity and specificity of whatever set of these steps they put together? Um, well, I, I cannot speak for other, uh, but we do. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I cannot speak for other companies, but yeah. 
Yes. So just a quick question. Uh, you mentioned um, about passkey storage, and uh, you talked about a lot of the password managers um, and how they're protecting that with a password, which is kind of counterintuitive. Yep. What would you say is the solution for secure password storage or passkey storage, excuse me, um, you know, particularly when some of those vendors use like multi-factor authentication and such? I think that's going to depend on your, on your use case. So for me, I use security keys. That's that's for me. Like I know how I am storing them. I know where they are. For me, that is what I do. So that's gonna depend on how uh, convenient and how secure you want them to be, right? So you have to put things into a balance. So if you wanna go with sync pass keys and you wanna be able to log in from everywhere, uh, you're gonna have to accept that. You know, uh, you're gonna have to accept that that can be accessed from somebody from some other location. So. Right now, that's that's the best thing that you have. So you have to make that decision for yourself. Okay, thank you, Aldo. And a round of applause for him, of course. Thank you.